What's up guys, today I'm going to teach you how to use the E-Trade app um, to buy stocks, sell stocks. Uh, basically, uh, the simple stuff that you'll need for a beginner, a couple tips and tricks, and uh, pretty much what you'll need to know to get started uh, with the stock market. Uh, first, we're going to start off by uh, opening the app. We've got it opened here. Um, you'll log in with your account. Um, right at the top, you'll have your net assets, which is... Uh, how much money you have in your account combined with the balance of the value of the stocks that you currently own. Right underneath is your combined total gain loss, um, and that'll be basically for all time. Then on the right there, you've got the daily gain loss um, amount and then percentage. Uh, right above that, you'll see that I have a little button that says stream uh, that allows uh, everything to be in real time uh, when you're receiving the data. So when you're buying and selling stocks, you're always buying and selling the real-time value. Um, sometimes, however, uh, when you're seeing the charts here on the bottom, and uh, same for each individual stock, um, you're going to see them maybe delayed up to like 15 minutes. Uh, once you have $1,000 or more in your account, uh, you have this option here to uh, stream, and that will allow you to... Uh, stay maintained on top of uh, what's the current value of the stock um, via chart. But anyways, to get started here, um, what you're going to want to do is uh, click the three lines at the top here, and this is kind of your menu. Um, you've got portfolios and quotes, uh, which I don't really uh, use, so you've got dashboard there, that's this home page that we're at right now. Um, then you have trade, uh, which is how you can do trades, however, I'm going to show you the easier way to do it. Then you have accounts, and then you can see your balances, um, orders that are being processed, uh, the portfolios, more or less what you're going to see on your dashboard when you click your account, and then uh, transactions that you've made. Then you've got research. Um, a lot of this stuff uh, is a little extra. You don't really need to be looking into this that much, um, but there's a few things that can help if you're trying to look at a stock or something, extra information in the market and whatnot. Uh, on the bottom of that, you have watch lists. So right now I've got a couple here. You'll see uh, I've got this one listed as buy and sell. So these are stocks, for example, that I've listed that I plan or would think would be good buys and then sell offs in the future. Um, I think for the beginning, you've got a device watch list, which is just local to your device. Then you've got investments to watch, uh, which you could uh, use as well. Um, primarily, I've got the ones I've made for buy and sell dividends for any dividend stocks that I'm interested in. Um, and then REITs at the bottom. Um, those are re real estate investment trusts. And those are kind of like the same thing as a dividend, really. Um, it's just more real estate based. Um, so anyways, back to the menu here. Uh, check deposit, that's going to be if you want to deposit uh, money into your account via check. Um, I think there's a few ways to do that, but I'm not going to agree to those because I don't really use it. Uh, then you've got transfer money. This is pretty much how you want to start. Um, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to link your bank account to your E-Trade account. And then you're going to verify your account. They're going to deposit, make two deposits, and then you simply are going to enter the uh, amounts for the two deposits to verify that the account you received um, is the one that you're using and that uh, pretty much it's the same with all the other uh, brokerages. They usually make two deposits and then you need to insert those values. Once that's in, you can make your initial deposit. The initial deposit is going to take the longest. So if you're looking to make some quick investments, if you know what you're doing right off the bat, then um, you want to plan in advance a little bit. Um, right after that, uh, usually it might just depend on the bank, but uh, smaller amounts, like under a thousand, usually you have access to them right away. Um, normally it takes about two business days uh, to process. Uh, otherwise, worst case, usually three days. Um, any money that they don't give you access to right away, they're gonna end up giving you uh, access to once the deposit clears. Um, but having the ability to use it right away is also very nice. For example, let's say you put 5,000 in, sometimes they might only let you use 3,000 um, just to make sure that you're not gonna 
lie about the money you have. Usually they check it through the bank anyways, but um, that's just something to keep note um, if you're planning on depositing today and doing something tomorrow, for example. You can also check your activity on this tab. Uh, usually when you go to schedule, you can just pick the same day. And uh, you can also repeat this transfer. So some people, instead of uh, depositing chunks, um, some people maybe like to take maybe $50 out of their weekly paycheck or monthly or something like that um, so that they can put it towards investing. You can set that up as well. You just put an amount and uh, you can change it later. Um, but that's a great feature so that you don't have to keep going back and adding it. Um, of course, maybe one month you don't want to, then you'll have to go back and change that setting. Then you've got bill pay. Uh, I guess you can uh, pay your bills with that, never used it. Uh, messages and alerts. So alerts are going to be your activity um, throughout the week or whatever that um, you've done. So but pretty much buying, selling, canceling, this, that. It's all there. Um, what else do we have? Help, account services. That's going to be more if you need uh, assistance with... Uh, anything with your account, any of the features. Um, so right now I'm going to go back to dashboard. And what you can do is you can click your NAT assets and it'll take you to your portfolio or you can go straight to your portfolio uh, via the tab at the top there. Um, then it'll say what kind of stocks you have, uh, total gain, and then you just swipe with the bar at the top here. Um, and then you can uh, see basically uh, what stocks you have, what they're valued at now, and throughout the day you can see how they're doing. Pretty much uh, that gives you a quick summary. And so let's say you want to go, I'm going to pick Apple right here. And so you can see here that uh, this is pretty much the page for the stock. Uh, you've got the ticker, uh, which is AAPL, uh, current value. Uh, you've got the bid which is uh, what somebody's willing to pay for it and how many shares. And then you have the ask, which is how much somebody's willing to sell it for and how many shares of that. Uh, that's going to be important because if the bid and the ask is, uh, it's got a greater gap between, um, you can actually maybe save a couple cents off the asking price, which I'll go into here in a moment. Uh, right underneath, so right now it's market closed because it's a Sunday. Uh, stock market doesn't operate on a Saturday or a Sunday. So... There's not really going to be any movement, although you see these three green um, dots kind of or squares uh, right above it turned to four now, the 53.81 million. Um, those are normally uh, what we call candles, and they show if a stock's going up or down uh, more on the minute scale. Uh, that's more important if you're day trading, but for example, if you're seeing more reds than greens, um, it won't really say the step here because it's not a day trading tool. But... Generally, if you're seeing more reds and greens, for example, the stock is slowly moving downwards. Um, so you've got the 52-week low and the 52-week high. So you can see the cheapest Apple stock was um, in 52 weeks, and it's got the date right underneath was $170, and the high was $327. So if you look right now, 282, somewhat a little bit closer to the higher end. And you can see the day high and the day low is also displayed there in the middle. So you can see, for example, if you bought on the day low, 276, um, you would have gotten a $10 difference between the day high. Um, that's how much these stocks can change in a day. Although on the norm, usually uh, it's going to be less than that. But because of uh, current circumstances with coronavirus in the market right now, um, there's a little bit more volatility. Um, so you'll swipe down here. Um, you've got earnings per share and stuff. Now, this is pretty important information. However, <clears throat> if you're a beginning investor, uh, it's something that you should kind of take the time to learn about. But if you know a company, for example, is, you know, for example, Apple. Apple is a relatively reliable company. It's not going to go out of business tomorrow. Um, so if you're just looking to invest into it, you know it's not going to go downhill. Um then you might not have to look at these details that much. Um, if you take this and you swipe to the right here, it shows the market cap, outstanding shares, um, dividend and dividend yield right there is particularly important. Um, if you're going to invest into a stock because of its dividends, 
Um, what I like about E-Trade is that it shows the dividend and the dividend yield. You don't have to calculate it. Um, it's generally accurate. Uh, sometimes it doesn't update you know, right away. It might take, end up updating at the end of the day or something. Um, but it also shows you the ex-dividend date, which means you must own this stock before this date to uh, get the dividend. And then you also have the dividend payable date. That's the day you're going to get your dividend. So if you scroll down here, you've got level two quotes and option chain. Now these are a little higher level when it comes to uh, stocks. Um, we're going to ignore those for now because uh, those are for more experienced traders for the most part. And there's a lot more risk involved when it comes to those. Uh, so you've got news here on the bottom, which is uh, actually very useful. And you can click on the tickers for each stock to go into them. Um, but you'll see the news usually reports, um, for example, if a stock is doing good or bad, um, how it might be doing. For example, right now you can see the U.S. stock market may enjoy the base rally ever when the pandemic is over. And that's probably true. Um, nobody can predict the stock market. So don't take uh, everything that the analysts say um, for 100%. Like nobody knows what's going to happen. But you can always get a good idea. So oh, you got earnings details right underneath that. Analyst research reports and company overview. Company overview, let's say you don't know what a company is. You've never heard of Apple or something. Gives you a nice uh, little summary. And this is great for companies that you haven't heard of. Uh, you want to know what kind of industry they're in. Um, kind of what they're working on. Uh, the next important thing is analyst research reports. And you've got a list of analyst research reports here um, that are that give scores based on the stock uh, with the current status of the business and the market. <clears throat> and so personally, I like Thomson Reuters. Uh, we'll go here and you can see, for example, this one, it says you should really buy Apple. Um, it's almost it's somewhere between uh, uh, it's pretty much center buy, but it's leaning towards strong buy a little bit. I mean, these guys take a lot of you know calculations and whatnot uh, with the market and they give them all scores and stuff and you have access to all of this with e-trade which is really great um, it's a step above some of the other uh, brokerages um, and really it's just an extra tool to help you make a more reliable decision maybe you've never heard of this company before uh, you might click on it it might sell, say sell right now or minimize or avoid well then you don't want to take advantage of this because you might end up losing all your money. So we're going to go back. So let's say you wanted to buy an Apple stock and you can see because I have a stock here, it says you have holdings at the top. Um, if you don't, it won't say that. Also, you can set an alert for a price, um, target price, low, high percentage, this, that. Uh, you can also add it to the watch list. And so let's go to trade here. And so pretty much right here, you have the bid there, you have the ask there. And so you would be able to go buy here. Um, you can choose a quantity. Let's say you want to put five grand instead into Apple here, but you don't know uh, how much that's gonna be. You click this little calculator on the side here and you put in $5,000 and it'll tell you 17 shares. It's And that goes off of the uh, actual stock price neither the bid nor the ask um, however you would be able to change that because let's say um, right now the bids 282.22 ask is 282.24 well you could go for 282.23 assuming this was live market because right now this isn't so these numbers are a little off compared to usual um, and then uh, you want to do 5,000. It's still 17 shares, but let's say you're buying one stock. Well, in a way you can save one cent there. Um, so then you would just end up putting one, one, and then, whoop, and then you have market. So market's basically going to be kind of around the ask price. Um, that basically means that you're willing to buy at what they're asking for right away. Um, normally I don't really buy it, uh, market price because sometimes it might end up being a little higher than what it is, depending on what some people are selling it for. And also you don't have a guaranteed number in your head. Um, so what I suggest, especially if you're buying only a few stocks is you go to limit market's going to be more important when 
a stock's moving really fast, for example, really fast upward, and uh, by the time you put a limit number in, um, it's going to be beyond that limit number. You're not actually going to execute your purchase. So a limit means that this is how much I want to pay for the stock at max or at minimum. So basically, let's say um, limit right now, I could put 282.23. More likely, this will get executed, for example. Now, let's say the stock keeps going down when I push this trade. It goes down to 282.17. Well, the second I finish this order, um, it will change to 282.17, um, and it'll buy it because that's less than the limit that I've put. Now, if it goes higher than the limit, then it will not execute that purchase. So you can see if it's rising fast, you might actually miss out, um, and that's where a market uh, order would usually come into uh, play. And then you can select the term good for day, good for 60 days, fill or kill, immediate or cancel, um, pretty much, uh, and then extended hours and whatnot, which I think uh, you might have to have a minimum in your account to do that. But uh, that's that. And then sell, very similar. You also have sell short and buy to cover. Um, we're going to go over those maybe later. Uh, but right now, buy and sell are the most important ones. So sell, it'd be kind of the same thing. So it would switch to sell, and uh, you could sell it at market, you could sell it at limit. Um, limit's gonna be kind of the inverse. So um, if it goes higher than the limit, it will sell. If it goes lower than the limit, it won't sell. So let's say a stock is dropping very fast and you wanted to sell it, then you might wanna do a market before you do a limit because the price might fall before your limit is put through and then you might end up losing more money. Um, so you can also uh, change it to stop limit and stop on quote. Um, those are kind of a little more elaborate if you're doing uh, more, more trading per se. But let's say you want to buy here uh, limit 282.23. Um, don't think it'll let me right now because I don't have enough funds in my account. We'll see what it says here. Yeah. Um, fully invested right now so let's just say it was uh 20 cents yeah i've got 20 cents in there at least <laughs> so it'll say here uh how much you've put um if there is a commission for it normally foreign stocks for example they'll have a commission so let's say i wanted to buy a stock of mercedes-benz um there's going to be normally like a 495 fee um so let's say you're buying an eight dollar stock well unless you're buying a ton of them um that $5 is going to be a lot. If you want to buy one stock, you're going to end up paying a lot more for that one stock. It might not even be worth it. So you're going to want to stick with stocks without fees if you're starting with lower amounts. Um, and then it'll give you the total cost. So this would just end up being $0.20. Cents. Um, same with selling. Usually if a foreign stock has a buy fee, then it'll also have a sell commission. So um, you'll want to keep an eye out for that. Um, you can also go change here and uh, you can edit it again also uh, since we're on that topic with uh, commissions um, there are some trusts and whatnot that also uh, charge a fee so if you're trying to sell them and so uh, just keep an eye out with what you want to buy and if you plan on selling it in the future let's say it doesn't do as well as you thought your loss might be a little more than you're expecting uh, so that's pretty much the basics. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, please let me know in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them. And uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.